So, guten Abend. Um, es tut mir leid, aber mein Deutsch ist nicht so gut und ich kenne keine wissenschaftlichen Worte. So, ich werde auf Englisch präsentieren. So, <clears throat> parasites. That's a really good thing to tell people that you're working on just before you shake their hand at a party. <laughs> <clears throat> and I wonder, I mean, what, what comes into our head when we think of parasites? I mean, maybe a leech, which, if you're unlucky, you might get when you're in the tropics. Or maybe a flea, which, well, I hope none of you have fleas, <laughs> but, but perhaps your dog or your cat does. Or maybe a mosquito or other biting flies, which irritate the hell out of us in summer. Or even ticks, which can bite us when we're out hiking, hiding in the grass. And these, these four parasites that I've shown you here are all ectoparasites. And that means that they find us, and then they attach themselves to the outside of us, and then they sit there sucking our blood. And I'm sure we all know a few people like that as well. But <laughs> <clears throat> and these are not the only type of parasites. There are also endoparasites, parasites that live inside us. Like, for instance, the tapeworm. These are not like Steph's worms. These are the nasty kind. <clears throat> these will sit inside your gut, eating all the food that you ate and just making you feel really uncomfortable, like a really bad housemate. In fact, I used to live with someone a lot like this. <clears throat> But even though all of these parasites are very small, I mean, so small that it's often quite hard to find them, some parasites are even smaller still, only a single cell large. And a classic example of this is plasmodium, which is the parasite that causes malaria and which is spread by the bite of an infected mosquito. And we in the group in Vienna here are working on another single-celled parasite, and this is a trypanosome. And the trypanosomes are shown here, colored in blue, and this is a picture taken from a sample of an infected person's blood, and in red, are human blood cells. So you get a feeling for exactly how small these things are. Um, they're found, this species at least, is found in Africa, and it's spread by the bite of infected tsetse flies. They're a type of horse fly. And when the infected fly bites us and injects this parasite into our bloodstream, the parasite stays there, multiplying inside our blood, eating all of our sugar, and over a long period of time, it will eventually cross the blood-brain barrier, enter our brain, and then begin causing neurological symptoms, tiredness, lack of energy, sleepiness. And this is what gives the disease its name, the sleeping sickness. And it's not, trypanosomes are not only found in Africa. There are also species in South America, and in the Far East. But the trypanosomes in Africa, at least, because they don't only infect humans, they also infect cattle, are the reason why it is so difficult to raise healthy livestock in Africa. And it's one of the things that prevents economic development in a lot of the sub-Saharan countries. And so one of the reasons why we're very interested in these parasites is obviously to assist development of the people living there. But that's not the only reason that these parasites are interesting. These are bacteria, like the bacteria that Isabella was telling you about. And on the tree of life, you can break it down into two branches. On one side, there are bacteria, and on the other side is everything else. <laughs> Worms, flies, ticks, us, and trypanosomes. And this means that we can actually take these single-celled parasites 
and study processes in them, because they're very small and they're a bit easier to handle than human tissue and human cells. And odds are, what is true for them will also be true for us. And this is exactly the reason why developing drugs against these parasites is so difficult. With bacteria, they're sufficiently different from us that anything that is toxic to a bacterium is probably not going to hurt us that much. And that is the whole basis for antibiotics. But for anti-parasite drugs, we're handicapped by the very fact that these parasites are so similar to us, and that something that is toxic to them will probably make us very sick too. But it's still fun trying to find a cure. <laughs> so I hope what I've managed to explain in these few minutes is that parasites are interesting not just because they're a bit weird and a bit disgusting and they have these fascinating life cycles and can make us very sick, but also that in many unexpected ways they can be quite like us. And so by studying them, we can learn a bit more about ourselves. Thank you, Shiv.